You remember your mother and father saying that? See, wisdom says you need to experience the repercussions of your, your dumb, idiotic choices. Therefore, you need to eat the fruit of your own way and be filled with, full with your own fancies. You thought that was good. Now, now fill your belly on it. Enjoy it. Look at verse 32. For the turning away of the simple will slay them. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. So this wisdom, this is the kind of wisdom Paul speaks of. It makes mature. It will grow you up. See, the, the um, Corinthians were, were, were babes and carnal. And they were living lives that were self-destructive, causing problems in their own lives, causing problems in the, the, the life of the family of God. And he says back in 1 Corinthians, go back with me there, look, look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter um, 2 once again. He says, however, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Mature. I found that um, this idea here that Paul is sharing with, with us this morning, and he's talking about those who are mature. The word that Paul used is, is an interesting word as well, at teleos. And it means basically something that is finished or complete. Some of your Bibles say um, among those who are perfect. Perfect. So is, is Paul saying we speak wisdom among those who are perfect in the sense that they have no problems, no sin, no, no failure? No, he's not talking about that kind of perfection. What, what he's talking about is, again, this idea of maturity or completeness. That is, what wisdom will do, wisdom will take you to where you're going. The, see, wisdom has the end in view. In fact, this is the same word that Jesus used when he was on the cross. It's the form of the word, when he was on the cross and he was dying. And near the end of, of his death, near the end of his life, or rather, he cried out and he said, it is what? Finished. See, it is complete. And Paul says, we speak wisdom among those who are complete or finished. Those who are interested in, in reaching the goal for which they've been saved. See, those people are hungry for wisdom. And, and he begins here because from here in, he's going to begin talking about spiritual wisdom and spiritual carnality. And he's calling them, he's calling them to maturity, that they need to reach the end for which they were saved, for the glory of God. And so he says, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, and yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. So what is he doing? Now he's, he's, contra he's going to contrast the wisdom of God with the wisdom of the world, human wisdom. And, uh, you know, when, when, when you're looking at wisdom and you want to understand the wisdom of, of the world, look at James chapter 3. Look at James 3. And we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians, but... Put your finger there in 1 Corinthians and go with me to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. In James 3, in verse 13, James asks the question, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter Envy and self-seeking in your hearts. Do not boast and lie against the truth. Bitter envying and self-seeking. This is exactly what the Corinthians were doing. They had, they had this competitive, angry spirit. 
They weren't recognizing that they were one, re- trying to reach the same goal, going the same way. And that kind of thinking, that kind of wisdom is not of God. Listen as James says this. He says, this wisdom does not descend from above. Think about this. Where does wisdom come from? True wisdom. Where does it come from? It comes from God. See that it descends. True wisdom does not emanate. Does not what? It doesn't come out of us. Where does true wisdom come from? It descends. It comes from God. So if, if, if you want true wisdom, the source is God. If you want to know true wisdom, skill for living, how should we live, the place to go is to the Word of God. It must come from God. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. You can rejoice in this wonderful truth if you truly recognize the wisdom of the cross of Jesus Christ. The Living Bread is an outreach ministry of Manna Bible Baptist Church, evangelizing, educating, equipping, and empowering believers with the truth of God's Word and engaging the community for revitalization as they embrace a Christian worldview. Pastor David Gaines is our senior pastor. As disciples of Christ, we want the world to understand Christianity is not just a Sunday event, but a daily, moment-by-moment way of life. You're invited to be with us on Sunday morning for worship. We meet at 8 and 10.45 a.m. Adult Sunday School is at 9.30. The church is located at 3043 West Belvedere Avenue between Northern Parkway and Park Heights Avenue in Baltimore. Manna Bible Baptist Church also offers midweek Bible studies on Wednesdays at noon. A time of praise and prayer takes place Wednesday nights at 6.30, followed by an evening study at 7.30. Precepts Ministry Bible Studies for Women and a Men's Ministry are also available as well as a singles ministry designed specifically for the fastest growing population in our culture today. Man of Bible Baptist has a passion for reaching youth and young adults, instructing in the way of Christ, focusing on Christian training and Christian living in all disciplines. One of Manna's primary objectives is to reach our community with the good news of Jesus Christ. Evangelism begins at home, spreading to our workplaces and our schools. Our mission is to exalt and worship the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and to educate, edify, and equip believers so that they become fully devoted followers of Christ, empowered to effectively evangelize the lost, and engage the community. Thanks for being with us today, and you're invited to come along and join us next time when Manna Bible Baptist Church presents another edition of The Living Bread.